Pleasure to welcome you. It's, I'm really honoured that I can speak about Elamir Hankish in front of uh, this uh, highly privileged uh, audience and conference. I would like to uh, speak in three blocks, and maybe in the middle one might be the most original and most interesting to you. And I would like to um, find a relation to your Chapelis presentation, who also touched upon this issue yesterday. I would also like to say a few words about our publishing house uh, at the Savara University Press, um, which might be important, and what books have been issued related to Hunkish. And I would also like to show you an example, demonstrate how, with my students at the university, uh, we talk about uh, post in a post-structuralist manner, and how we analyze poems uh, at the literature classes and with this particular example is going to focus on an, a poem by Janusz Orany and it, Orany was one of uh, Hankish's favorite poets and we are celebrating the 200th anniversary um, of Orany's birth and Alamir Hankish very often quoted poems from him being uh, <laughs> You know, one of his favorite poets. Uh, his activity, Hankish's activity as a literary scientist, uh, was significant because he had spent some time at the Hungarian uh, Academy of Sciences and worked for the Institute of Literature. And this is the book which really didn't meet uh, uh, satisfaction for, for the uh, power, for the uh, government, and the, the communist regime thought it was uh, uh, dangerous and these are the books that we are actually working from uh, at the university and also my secondary school pupils um, deal with this subject because um, this book and the all the perspectives that it uh, offers basically determines 20th century and 21st century literary theory. Now, if you want to focus on literary theory of the century, this is a basic cornerstone. This is what you have to consult to understand what we are talking about. These two volumes uh, were published with the support of the Academy at that time, and it was uh, on the unreachable nature of certainty. This is what the uh, book is uh, talking about. And uncertainty used to be a buzzword and a keyword in Hankish's uh, uh, of, um, and as we know, later he left behind uh, literature, he decided to focus on sociology, and he went on to other disciplines. But I'm sure that this particular book would be worth, I mean, would deserve an award, a literary award. And it was published later when he was already a sociologist, and it has offers a complex model uh, I would like to talk a little bit about. First, I would like to say that the title of this book very clearly uh, uh, express what was supposed, to, what was missing uh, from the literature before Hankish came on the scene, and it's the knowledge of um, the struggle of people, it's the preparation for such struggle, and he could uh, produce texts that had such wonderful microstructures on the like structures, at the end of which I could make all kinds of parallels with Hungarian writers and poets. So at the end of which, he says, well, if you want to know what I'm talking about, go back to the beginning and start reading all over again. Um, there are quite a few literary criticists who follow the same principle and say I, say, I can say anything about this work, but I cannot possibly say anything about it, only a fragment. And Hankish has a holistic data, a holistic approach brought into uh, literary theory, and he sort of retains this approach, this perspective, and from the early 1980s, uh, actually from 19. 
1784 onwards when Giza Ot Otlik uh, becomes part of uh, the literary material for uh, students and at least peripherically um, Elemir Honkish also becomes uh, part of this uh, material. Uh, he focuses on layers and he believes that if you put layers on top of one another you will get a complex model which will show you that as the world is a, a complex being, a literary work is also a complex unity, a complex entity and it has all sorts of layers, metaphorical layers, layers of meaning and this is what the scientists, the literary scientists would like to describe to find the meanings and all kinds of functions of the different layers and then well he concludes that if you want to learn about the whole of the poem the whole of the little work you need to work uh, you need to read it uh, over and over again um, you can see this poem written in red letters on the screen and uh, Hankish wanted to show how the whole world can be summed up in 12 words it basically speaks about uh, vines, grape vines that are bleeding from uh, red leaf. Now what does he say when analyzing this 12 word poem? The whole word is included in this poem. He says that there is one layer of meaning that he could trace, the colors and how, how are, what are the colors related to? Well they are basically related to diseases and he says it's a complex system of interlinked elements. Now the text is a bit complicated. I don't want to read it, but it basically claims it's impossible, of course, uh, to to analyze it at the same level as the poem gives you a kind of impression, but he produces a kind of oscillation between the real and the unreal and how the references are transferred uh, via a linguistic medium uh, and get, we get answers to our questions. So these flaming words which uh, Kostolani uses in his work, it's like, allow me to show you something that he inspired as well. It's a kind of uh, literary analysis, a po an analysis of a poem. And so it's a kind of playful uh, playing around with the words. Uh, actually, he, this poem that we are playing with now, Aran wrote it on his uh, 64th birthday. We are going to uh, uh, count the letters. Uh, the, the, the poem is made up of 65 letters and now we are going to vote with the audience whether it's on purpose or not. So when Oren writes this poem, he is uh, 64 years old, and we don't know whether it's on purpose or by accident. So this uh, poem is based on numbers, and if you look at the mathematics, uh, mathematical aspect, uh, you can actually find this 64, this, this, this number featuring all the time, and it's quite obvious that it's not by chance that you can see the 64 featuring in the... 
So this is an old former student of uh, the speaker, and uh, he's act she's actually making a, a, a mathematical analysis <laughs> of, of uh, uh, using using the number 64. So if we deduce and well, try to make all kinds of uh, uh, equations with the numbers, well, we realize that it couldn't have been by chance that because at the core of everything there is the number six, 64. Ugye tudják követni. E, még egy pici van, és ezt még azzal is fokozhatjuk, hogy az esztendő szó betűinek számát, az a 8-at négyzetre emelve szintén 64-hez jutunk, tehát az is megtervezett, hogy éppen a 64-es szám után került az esztendő szó. Azt hiszem ez már elegendő bizonyíték arra, hogy a verse számmisztikára épül. Természetesen arra, hogy nem hiába várta ennek az évnek az eljövetelét, hiszen nagyszerűen bebizonyította a nagyon... So the final conclusion is that Arany could uh, actually prove that uh, he had a very good talent in logics and mathematics, and then it's quite obvious is that the number 64 lay at the core of the uh, the poem and the whole thing is uh, based on uh, numerology yeah so let's vote who says that Orany uh, wrote on purpose this uh, and it's and the 64 letters uh, are not by chance so the first question who says that it was on purpose Twenty-three people say, who says it's by accident? <laughs> yep. And 14, 15 people say that it's, 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 uh, it was not on purpose. But uh, I promise that by the time we have the next uh, conference on Honkish, I'm going to provide you with a more definite answer. And now, if we, if we can go back to the poem, let's say recite the poem together. And I think this is the last quotation that we should read. Anybody who is born to be Hungarian, whether you like it or not, you have to take a go with our passion and you will have pleasure of reading Janusz Arany in original Hungarian. Thank you. I prepared with my presentation to make it an appendix to the previous presentation. I think this is a <laughs> this is a game that we are all playing. We are making uh, questions to you. We'll have to find out who the text was written by. So who wrote it? It's about excitement. It's again a quotation. So excitement can have different natures. And it has various roles in literature. It's present in the theater when reading and you're reading books. So excitement, something that equals equals with experience. So it's actually the poet who makes a life more exciting and if you don't believe it you should you should go and try it. You, you should go and see for yourself. If you read Yokai, another Hungarian writer, and you will feel completely differently having read one of his books. And excitement uh, has been generated only based on the book. And if you read a poem, poem, for instance, by Betufi, and if it, this has a very desperate sounding, still it, it will generate a whole uh, storehouse of feelings and sentiments. So excitement is something that you get from reading literature. I put this book, and it will be very difficult to guess who it was written by. It was written by Janusz Honkisch. And when I found 
uh, this quotation I told Balash uh, um, <laughs> to my colleague and said that this is how you should write about literature. And there was another quotation and a kind of anecdote from yesterday that uh, Elamir Hankish got a picture postcard from his father every single week that you should um, uh, go, you should walk straight, you should comb your hair, and you should not splutter. And when he came here to, to, to talk at the conference in, in, in Kursek, he actually interpreted the lines. Uh, go straight means that you should have uh, uh, spine, and uh, uh, if you want to comb yourself, it means that you should keep your life in order, and thirdly, uh, not to splutter, it means that you should be able to talk to people in a way that they understand you. And when they left, um, when the parents died and they started to go through the possessions of the, the parents in the, in the old house, um, they started to uh, actually go through their things and then, then when um, both of them died, both, both kids, they actually started to discover what, what this house was holding and then they got a room full of uh, papers and documents from Janusz Honkisz, uh, who is um, Elamir's brother. We don't know exactly um, what could have happened, sorry, it was uh, Elamir's father. Uh, we don't know what could have happened uh, had he not overcome his father in terms of fame and reputation, uh, but he had done a great deal in the field of literature and he had published wonderful works as well. If we look at the past 20 or 30 years uh, in Elamir's OFU, and uh, there was a very short period where he actually um, became a public figure. He was um, uh, the head of the Hungarian TV company, uh, the state TV, uh, but that was um, very brief. And also, his father was uh, working at the Ministry of Education, but basically, uh, he only very briefly touched upon literature and literary theory. He um, was interested more in music and he researched Liszt. He created uh, the Hungarian um, music uh, archives and and he also launched uh, the summer university. Uh, he was president of uh, for 16 years uh, in, in, in Debrecen. So there are quite interesting allusions between the two um, careers. This was another parallel between uh, the OFO of uh, the father and the son that is as notable. And if we go back to the activity that Janusz Honkisz uh, conducted um, in the field of literature, I think there are some fantastic uh, parallels. He uh, was into French literature and he taught French uh, literature at the um, um, uh, University of Debrecen and he also also uh, taught uh, comparative uh, literature in French. So it's quite an interesting thing uh, that he was the first one to actually say this in, uh, from among Hungarian literary criticists or uh, literary uh, scientists. Uh, that um, this, sorry, I missed this point. <laughs> He's talking a little bit too fast. So, again, uh, I'm going to give you a text and you will have to tell me uh, who the writer is. I believe, I believe in recovery. I believe in pain. I believe in a perfect, uh, health, healthy body and an open soul which does not have any fraud, any bad feelings. It's inconvincible. I don't believe in mistakes. I know that there are mistakes. I like dreams. I like hope. And I believe in the creative human spirit. What I hate is uh, uh, ignorance and uh, and scientific approach. And who is the author? It's once, once again Janusz Hankisz. And I think this hunk, this hunkish um, um, 
phenomenon is something that we should we should deal under one umbrella and we should think of uh, the members of all the family not only Elamir himself.